Happy Mount Monday, friends, and welcome to today's video. If you've been around this channel for a little while, you'll know that I completed a through hike over the Arizona Trail over the course of fall 2019 and just a little bit into January of 2020. And I know that many of you who are considering going out on the trail this spring are probably in full-fledged planning mode for your trip. So let's talk a little bit about five things that you should have dialed in for your through hike of the Arizona Trail. Stick around. So the first of these five tips for your through hike that I'm going to talk about is having a plan for your water. Depending on the season, the Arizona Trail can be very touch and go with water. One season, there will be plenty of water, wildflowers everywhere, you don't have to really think about it. And other seasons, such as this last fall hiking season, we didn't get much rain for months. So water sources were through and far between and probably a little gross and muddy. In cases like that, it's really important to know what you're getting yourself into in case you need to cache water ahead or have a plan for where you need a camp so you can be close enough to water so you're not having to be carrying a bunch of extra water weight on your back. So use gut hook and there's also a great water report on aztrail.org for those of you who are members on the Arizona Trail association. Um, I would highly recommend getting a membership there. There's some great resources to help planning your through hike. So definitely go on there and on gut hook to look how water's looking out here before you get going on your hike and you end up in a bad situation. Tip number two, it's important to have very sturdy footwear for this trail. On my hike, I went through four different pairs of shoes. Three of them were ultra lone peaks and I went through one pair of ultra Olympuses and you needed some good shoes. Those shoes got torn up. I know I've heard on other trails such as the AT that you really only need a couple of pairs of shoes to, you know, a pair of shoes every couple thousand miles or something like that. On this trail, I was only able to get around 200 to 300 miles out of each pair of shoes. The trail is very rough on your feet and there are certain spots that it is extremely rocky where a rock plate in that shoe or what I found worked for me is uh, that super feet green insert gives you a little bit extra foam protection on the underside of your foot. Um, would highly recommend that system or getting some good boots. The problem is you also need some good uh, breathing shoes so find what works for your feet but definitely have a good plan for your shoes because this trail will beat up your feet and will chew up your shoes really, really quick. And if you're not prepared, you could have a bad time. And who wants to have a bad time on a through hike? That's not what it's about. So tip number three, it's really, really important to plan a little bit of contingency into your plan for this trip. On the Appalachian Trail, you're getting pretty close to towns every couple of days and you can get a resupply relatively easily. On the Arizona Trail, I believe the longest carry is 120 miles through the Mazet cells. And you really need to have a good plan together for if things don't go right. Um, a little bit extra food is probably a good call. A little bit extra water is probably a good call. You know, if you wake up one morning and you're in the middle of a wilderness area and you feel sore and you need to take a zero for your own well being, it's good to have that in the card so you have that as a choice. So you don't have to make some survival or desperation decisions along your way. Also, if you're really loving an area, that extra little bit of food can help you slow it down a little bit and really appreciate the scenery and not really have to be thinking about, oh, I only have this much food, I have to make it to that next spot by this time or else I'm screwed. Also, it's important to consider what amount of risk you're comfortable with on your hike. Those ultralight folks that have that five pound base weight yeah, they're probably cutting some corners, but with enough experience and skills and training, you can cut out some of that equipment because you can 
tolerate more risk just based off your own skill set and what you you know you can handle. But if it's your first through hike, it's kind of hard to consider like, okay, when I'm 40 miles in the middle of nowhere, what am I going to do? What kind of skills do I need if something goes bad? So each person has their own tolerance for risk and you're not probably not going to be able to have the super, super ultralight lightest pack without really thinking about what risks you're comfortable with. Because you don't want to put yourself in a situation that you can hurt, you're going to hurt yourself. And obviously backpacking out in isolated areas, especially by yourself, that's a risky behavior. Um, there's some allowable risk because you're, you're engaging in risky behavior when you're out there in the middle of nowhere without help immediately available. So do some deep thinking before your hike about what you really feel your weaknesses are and where your gear can come in to help fill out what skills or experience you lack so that you don't end up in a bad situation. Tip number four, and this one I really didn't think about before I was out on my hike. So maybe some of you, this might be a surprise, but it's really important to have a way to keep your mind engaged when you're out there. When I was out doing my fall through hike, the fall season, at least that year, wasn't that big on the Arizona Trail. I think there were fewer than 100 people that hiked it that time of year. And obviously, if you've done the Appalachian Trail or the like, you'll know it's kind of like a big walking party along your way. If you're hiking the Arizona Trail, though, it's not that popular of a trail yet. So you're not going to have a whole group of people you're constantly with and around. And it's very likely that you'll have several nights alone. In fact, there were only two nights my entire through hike that I camped with other groups of people. That isolation can make it difficult for you if you're alone out there, keeping your morale up, you know, the scary things that go bump in the night when it's pitch black out and you're alone in the middle of nowhere, it's a little harrowing. And it's good to have a method to calm down your mind and bring yourself back to your center and keep yourself sane, so to speak, because that isolation can really start to get to you. Things like eBooks on your phone or music downloaded off of Spotify or the like can really make a big difference in keeping your morale up and keeping you going and killing those miles and sticking to your goal so you can get all the way through that trail like you know you really want to. For me, I use Spotify. I download playlists on playlists on playlists onto my phone and I would listen to a lot of music when I was out there. Obviously, it's really nice to slow down really appreciate the sounds and smells of nature as much as you can. I'm not at all against that. You don't want to distract yourself from raw, the raw beauty of nature. But there are some times where, say, you're trying to go up this really big mountain and it's really hard. Some really good music will push you to go up that hill and do things that you didn't think you were even capable of. Those little morale boosts can make a huge difference, especially when you're getting down on yourself a little bit. So I'd highly recommend Having some plan, whether that's podcasts or audiobooks or music or physical books to read on your phone, have a way to keep your mind engaged. And now, for me, since I have one playlist, you can actually find it on Spotify if you look me up. I'll actually put a link to it down in the video description if you want to listen to what I was listening to when I was out in the woods. It's a little bit of everything, so don't judge my music taste, please. I have a very eclectic taste in music, it's a little bit of everything. But now, you know, I could listen to uh, Ride Captain Ride by Blues Image and the moment it takes me back to is hiking down off of the ridgeline of Four Peaks as I'm descending down to Roosevelt or uh, Bill Withers' Lovely Day. It just takes me back to traipsing through the woods up by Happy Jack. You know, I have a strong connection with my memories to the songs that I was listening to when I was in those areas. So now listening back to that music, it takes me right back to the trail. And maybe you'd like that sort of a relationship with the trail and whatever you are consuming in that moment as well. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But overall, having a good plan to keep your mind from focusing on the isolation is definitely something that I would recommend. <laughs> All right, so tip number five. <laughs> it is important to really slow yourself down. Take that time to stop and smell the roses. Take in that view from the mountaintop an extra 10 minutes. A through hike isn't a race. 
The whole point of it is to go and smell the roses. Walk across the state of Arizona. It's a slow way of transportation, your own two feet, but that visceral experience of mile after mile really, really shows you the landscape in a new way. And you become part of it in a way. You get used to seeing the moon rise and set. You get used to how, for example, over the course of my fall through hike, the days were getting shorter and shorter. You get more tuned into those natural cycles. And it's really important to really slow down, not have that, oh, I need to get to this mountaintop to get this Instagram pic or that beat by beat way that society really pushes us to live our lives when you're at home. A through hike is a completely different animal. It's a completely different state of mind. I really encourage you to immerse yourself in that as much as you can. Don't worry about getting to that one goal that you need to get to this spot by the end of the day, unless it's connected to your water planning. But stop and smell those roses. Embrace that through hike. Embrace those months that you're out there and just take it in as much as you can because it's gonna be over before you know it and those memories will carry you further in life than you know. Take it from me. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please hit that like button down below as it'll help the YouTube algorithm recognize the value in my work and I'll get it out to more people just like you. If you think I earned it, hit that subscribe button down there as well so you can be here for my next video, whether that be a gear review, adventure, or a little planning philosophy sort of video like this. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Thanks, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay groovy.